matter how far chat GPT advances and Neuralink becomes more adept and everything else, there is no technological, uh, technological replacement for an insane chest pump. It's, uh, it's never going to change, goddammit. So, plan for today, exactly as spoken. Let's go nuts. I, um, I can tell from yesterday's leg day, I was feeling a little tender right in here. Kind of a, it must just be some kind of bundle of nerves or so that I just keep tweaking. Like, not serious injury-wise, I'm not saying anything like that. But just enough where sometimes when I'm doing pressing, it can flare up or touch, or if I'm doing um, a hammerish curl, I'll feel it a little. Usually that's kind of a cue that I maybe do for a rest day, but it feels alright today. So, I think, well, I'm not exactly sure what I think. Chest is going to kind of just be uh, whatever kind of <clears throat> not comes to mind, but just sort of surfaces, you know, just sort of fucking manifests. Because I've been liking a lot of lighter squeezing flies, like a full second hold, I like a two second really long kind of stretch, and then hold again, like with just fucking moderate weight. But that's not going to replace the fucking sort of sensation of a real heavy set of, uh, you know, Smith bench or something else like that. So I think I'll just bounce around in between. Maybe, um, hmm. I don't know, because I, I, uh, I haven't had much luck really bouncing around for chest, you know, like with, um, with, uh, yeah, even legs too. I mean, there's a few different movements for chest, right? We all know it. You got flies, presses, and then you can kind of do a combination of the two with sort of a converging press, which, uh, kind of has aspects of a press and a fly mixed together into one. So what I've kind of noticed is by the time I've done one of those movements for like two or three sets, and they were actually really good sets, then by the time I move on to whatever's next, I don't really feel like I can get anything out of going back. At least not like back and forth, like two sets of flies, two sets of press, two sets of flies, two sets of press. It's like by the time I've done some flies, some presses, and then maybe one more fly just as kind of a finisher for squeezing, usually that ends up being it. So I think uh, I think we'll just have to see. But the warm-up will be the same as normal. We'll loosen up my rotator cuff, make sure my triceps are ready to load some weight. Same thing with my back, shoulders, chest. Everything that I know is going to come into play, I want to be nice and warm. But we'll, uh, we'll get into some, to some other deep topics uh, on the way back. Let's, uh, let's just get amped up, pumped up, and then uh, filled up. That'll be, that'll be after this video once I come home and uh, get my post-workout meal in, which I'm uh, not exactly sure what that's going to be yet, but I'll find out in due time. So let's just get started. Gym should be empty by now, too. <sighs> Alright, let's go fucking nuts here. In a controlled manner. Yeah. I do one more rep and then it drops out. Yeah. 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 
Eight with the four plates there. Good set though. Let's only do three plates and a 25. That's a bit more realistic. Let's do one more set with just three points. Yeah. That's enough Smith. Let's move on, god damn it. All right, here I'm thinking, let's go back and forth between flies and cable press. So this will be flies. Weight, actually a little heavier, but nothing crazy. Yeah, a little heavier. Within reason, of course. Let's, uh, let's get that up and make it happen. to press I think hello let's do a pack deck set I was really kind of just waiting for this to open up by doing that set of cables but the chest is getting close to fully cooked I don't foresee many more sets but just enough to completely wreck it Yeah. 
One more. Next one will be a drop set, too. This might be the finisher. Burnout with Peck Deck. Well, no, pre exhaust with Peck Deck. Burnout with converging bent over cable press. And if that feels nuts enough, post down and get out of here. But if I can tell I need a little more work to be fully done, I'll just fucking repeat it. I might get a little nasty with these reps in terms of tempo. Pose down. All freaking done with that, I think. All right. Pumped to shit. Honestly, to the point where I'm kind of like fucking burning. Those sets of uh, Smith Bench were insane. Man. And I, uh, honestly, my hype level walking into the gym today, not peak. Not my fucking highest uh, fucking amount of energy today. Which, you know, sometimes that's just the case. But... I must have been playing the perfectly correct songs to get me uh, seriously into the zone. But let's get, get this thing off. See how chest looks pumped up twice the size as normal. And then get ready to go home and eat something. So I'm definitely starting to feel the difficulty of the bulk. With, uh, with any dieting phase, if you go up and down, like bulk diet, it's, uh, it's sort of a sine wave of difficulty month one easiest thing in the world zero difficulty because <clears throat> all i'm doing is eating as much food as i'm hungry for but month two month three and a month four that's where it gets fucking challenging and then i'm really trying to fucking push it calorie wise to maintain a steady state of weight gain but only another two months left or eh, i'll be more like three months then and reveal all the fucking contractile steel that's been built underneath this small layer of uh, fluff. Go, oh. dude! Holy shit! Oh. oh my god. I'm exhausted. I feel like I'm still feeling some residual fatigue from yesterday's leg workout. But I'm pumped. Let's get the car, man. We done. Alright, it has not been the easiest thing in the world for me to really get a good grasp on. But be fucking careful when you're lifting. Do not, um, well, I mean, this is obvious. Don't hurt yourself. But to an extent, it can't be prevented, right? There is always some minor risk of just a completely random whatever, like somehow you had a, just a random pole doing something. I, um, I feel like I pulled my right hamstring a little bit yesterday doing um, those sets of single leg leg curls, and they were light sets. Like, it was only 70 pounds, uh, but I almost felt like I squeezed so hard at the top that I like maybe re-pulled some old little tweak or something. All right. So being a little more mindful, you know, you're going to keep that in mind when I come back for legs on the next leg day <clears throat> and do my best not to fucking flare it up. So that's, um, that's something that has taken me a little bit to grasp because especially on fucking bench, dude, if you go back um, a year 
and look at some of my chest days and the, the way that I was pumping out reps, very different fucking tempo. And uh, I'd, uh, I'd even get guys say like, dude, oh my God. <laughs> Sam, I can't believe you're benching like that. Like, <laughs> just because I'd have like a real fast eccentric and then just really, I'd be pumping out reps, but it would be a lot of weight. And in my mind, I'm like, dude, that's how I'm supposed to do it, right? It's a lot of weight. Move it around as quick as I can, right? Exert as much force into it and really use my fucking pecs. And, I mean, it worked. I was getting pumps. But you know, I'm having a much better time, at least uh, at least on the Smith machine, doing some slower, kind of uh, more controlled reps, at least for um, the heavier sets. You know, if I were just doing, uh, like, if instead of, um, like, a really heavy, you know, set for... Um, <clears throat> try not to yawn again for like eight or even a little bit lighter or even a little bit lower reps like today uh, I I hoped I could have got eight I ended up getting what like five or six with four plates on the Smith but s the lower weight or the lower uh, the lower speed on those reps I feel much more fucking comfortable there's no uh, there's no abrupt force change it just feels way fucking better but with something like that last set of um Cable pressed. Oh, trying so hard not to fucking yawn right now. <laughs> but with the, with that last set of cable press, especially once I was already pre-exhausted with the pec deck, I mean, dude, I don't mind fucking just you know pumping out some reps because that's uh, that's sort of what my level of fatigueness called for. You know, doing a kind of a nasty set like that, just moving some blood around was kind of what I was aiming for then. But, yeah, I think we're getting, uh, I'm getting close to a more optimized training routine. Because my rate of injury has decreased tremendously over this last year. Honestly, I think my improvements to my training have probably been, uh, whoa, have probably been the most concentrated ever over this last year or so. And I think... Dude, a total fucking portion of that has to do with the fact that now I get a lot of feedback on the way that I'm doing stuff. But feedback's only half of the fucking equation. You know, you've got to be able to try different things. And even if you, at the time, may think, it's like, oh, I like the way I do it now. And what I've been doing works. It's like, obviously, that's that's the right way to do it, right? Not exactly, man. Come on, have a fucking open mind. You know, the enlightened lifter is not so boxed into whatever random routine he first started out with that he's not open to making changes and accepting that he's wrong you know because if you're uh i mean we've all kind of heard the phrase if you're wrong for a minute right whatever but if you're wrong for life oh my god what a fucking chump right so that's where you know be open to hearing changes and taking it into account and trying it in your own routine, implementing new different set styles or whatever else, <clears throat> and just seeing if it works. The uh, the problem is, uh, it's not an awesome environment to hear fitness advice online. It's very divisive, and you know anybody that's making videos like this is the right way to train, it just kind of inadvertently ends up being like a a straight up roast on anybody who doesn't completely agree with their mindset and their thought process. And even if the guy's right, what the fuck, man? You're really going to make a video and just highlight like 20 people doing something like, like, I mean, just let's say wrong. Yeah. Let's say you're doing like a risky set. Your risk of injury is higher doing them like in this way or whatever. And the whole time it's like, why would you lift like a freaking idiot? Like, uh, dude, have some fucking charisma. You know, if you want to, promote whatever style of training you think is best and be nice about it <laughs> you know that's a that's kind of my thoughts there and then not only people posting about training which I, I mean I'm gonna say again not very easily digestible I mean these guys are like if you're not doing it like this then you know, you're leaving gains on the table uh, but even worse if you're trying to get into a, a little fitness debate in a comment section of, well, YouTube videos are usually a bit more diplomatic, right? When people come to a YouTube video, 
uh, they're actually kind of, well, they pick the video, they're watching it, they've gotten some skin in the game, they're kind of interested. They may say some solid advice, and it's not like there isn't good advice out there from, you know, comment sections, but the issue is everybody's got a fucking keyboard, and suddenly everybody's now a fitness expert just spamming, I'd say, 90% junk info in, um, you know, in random threads back and forth. And it's like, you know, two guys can go back and forth on Instagram in the comments for like 30 minutes straight. You know, it's like, well, if you're not getting the absolute stretch from a deep squat or like your knee flexion isn't going past 90 degrees on a leg press, then you're leaving fucking quad gains on the table. Your quads are never going to grow like that. Uh, and then, you know, both of those guys are 170 and they haven't been to the gym for, you know, two months straight. Uh, so it's, uh, it's hard out there. You know, information is not served so uh, easily on uh, on just a fucking silver platter as you know I kind of wish it would be, but that's uh you know that's where it's your fucking responsibility to scan scan around, take in different information, you know, listen to clips, listen to uh talk to guys at your gym actually, you know, who are actually doing it, right? They're not just talking about it; they actually kind of at least probably know what they're doing to the point where dude where the <laughs> this road closure's killing me but you know, if you're actually going to a gym and talking to more advanced lifters they're going to tell you real advice so all that's to say you know be uh be careful right there's a lot of um there's a lot of motivation to just like s promote some random training style which for the most part is, I'd say, 80% driven by, like, use my code for my new eight-week shredding program. Uh, and then, you know, it's just some fucking random garbage. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, all I'm saying there is be mindful. You know, try to keep an eye out for what's legit, solid information. And don't be dissuaded by nonsense. Even if the guy is jacked. Dude, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of characters. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying, like, anybody specifically right now but just like over the course of time there are a lot of characters who say they're training one way but they're really just doing the basics you know like um it's like yeah i do you know 500 push-ups every morning and then i add a 10 mile run and then i uh you know i do 5,000 squats per day and and it's like this guy's just doing a regular fucking push pull leg split like every other lifter <laughs> right so that's all I'm trying to get into there. Not to not to turn this into a snake oil rant, but uh, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes freaking open for it. Wait, plan for the post-workout meal? <sighs> I've got no idea. I need to see what's in the fridge. I got to go to the grocery store tomorrow. I'll um, and there's a 75% chance that you're gonna fucking come along with me as well. So keep an eye out there. But I think I'm, uh, yeah, fuck. Mm. I've totally run out of ramen, which has not been, like, the primary carb source. I've really been chowing down on, I'd say, oats, potatoes. Actually, yeah, fucking oats and potatoes have been, like, 75% of the carb source per day. But I'll add, I'll add in some stuff purely for my own enjoyment. I've, uh, you know, I've got some Ben and Jerry's in the fridge. I've got a couple ice cream sandwiches. I've got some sweets, but I have felt a lot better just slamming more complex carbs. So, oh, I think let's just go home, sleep it off, come back for back tomorrow night. So, I think I'll just see you then. I'm uh, <laughs> running low on energy. I can barely think of anything to say. Go hard, get your sleep, drink your water, do your cardio, go to failure. Let me get the gist. A little bit of a short one today. I'll see you tomorrow for back.